Russ, the relationship between language and consciousness is uh, discussed in terms of which is necessary to cause the other in very theoretical kinds of analyses. You've studied inner experience in which language occasionally arises. What can we learn about the, the content of consciousness in terms of language? Well, I agree that consciousness and language have been combined at least uh, since Aristotle, uh, probably some number of uh, millennia before that. But I think that it's an, I think you can have consciousness without language. And I think you can probably, and you can have language without consciousness. It goes both ways. So I, what I'm pretty sure of is that there are many experiences, maybe even most experiences, if you were to sample. So you know that I, I give people beepers and I ask them to, to uh, describe what's in their inner experience at the moment of the beep, and I go through some procedures to try to get a high mm -hmm. fidelity or faithful view of that. Mm -hmm. And I would say in the majority of those experiences, there is nothing experiential that is worded. There's no, there's no <coughs> spoken words, there's no heard words, there's mm. no words of, of any kind in experience. Now, I would say it's possible that there are words that are going on in the mind, whatever that is, or in the mm. neurology, wherever that is. But as far as experience is concerned, I'm quite sure that there are many, if not most, experiences that do not have words in them. So when you do your sampling, you find that a majority of cases when people are asked to say what, what is in their inner experience at that precise moment does not include uh, at least vocalized language. Or seen language or heard language or any, or any language. other kind of language. Okay. Yes, that's, what, that's exactly what I'm saying. And so what are, what are the components of, of that that we'll, we can try to d discern that is not a language, or a, a sensation, a feeling, an emotion? Or what, what, are the, what are the things people report that are not well, a language? For example, people would say, I'm, I'm seeing a visual image. And at, the, at this particular moment, I'm seeing my car, and it's parked in the parking lot uh, where I left it because I know that my parking meter is... Yeah expired or whatever. Okay, but they don't need to think of the word car. There's no word car, there's no word parking meter, there's no word worried, there's no, there, there's no language whatsoever. There are theories that say that all visual imagery, ha to understand it, you got to have language. Right, I just don't right. think that's true. Right. And so how can you refute that theory? Because if, if the image uh, is in reality based on a language understanding of, of the elements in the image, it wouldn't necessarily be part of the perception. That's correct. So I, I, I very carefully do not try to explain what happens behind the perception. I think that's, that's a very difficult task and I'm not up to it. <laughs> so what I try to describe, which I think is an important task, and I think I am up to that, I try to describe what the actual experience is. So what. So I, I, I describe phenomena, and what I can say with pretty great assurance that there are many phenomena that just do not have language. Which, what lies behind it, I don't know anything about that. Okay. I, would, I would speculate that it's not language, but I don't really know. Why would you do that? Why would you speculate? Because I think there's a lot of stuff that goes on without language. And, and, and I think most, many theories about language just are, are off the mark. So people talk, for example, about there being a language processor. Well, I'm quite sure that there have to be at least several language processors because I have samples where people are simultaneously saying two different, two different kinds of things. Or I have samples where people are saying one thing, but it's divided between two processors. So I have a, 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 a woman with bulimia nervosa that I'm thinking about right now where, who had, who had a, a verbal thought and half of the words of this verbal thought was, the, the verbal thought went something like, uh, why do TV shows always have blonde women for men to look at? <laughs> and half of those words were spoken in a soft voice in the front half of her head, and the other half of those words were spoken in a loud voice in the back half of her head. And it was like you took a random, you, you jumbled up these words, you threw half of them in the front and half of them in the back, and you put them together, you'd get this whole, the whole sentence. And how did, you, how did she report that? At the moment of the beep, she said, in the front of my head, <laughs> in a soft voice, I am saying the words uh, blonde, pretty men and in the back of my head I'm saying in a loud voice why is it or I, you know, I can't I can't do that because I, I don't have that particular skill right but 
the, the overall point of my research, I would say, is to make the point that if you want to try to understand what the mind is about and what, how language is associated with consciousness or whatever, you have to start with a, a, what I call a high fidelity view or a faithful view of the way inner experience is. And language just doesn't figure in it in much of it. Much of those, much of many of the time. So the theories that say that consciousness and language either developed cotemporaneously or that indeed consciousness was the product of language, you think your research casts some doubt on that? I'm an agnostic about that. I, I, if I had to bet, you know, I'm at the gates of St. Peter, and St. <laughs> Peter says you can come in if you guess right, yeah. I would guess, you know, that, that it's not linked to language. But I don't, I don't claim to be an authority about that.